For centuries, Jews were persecuted in almost all countries of Europe. Because of their faith, they were pushed to the margins of society and in some cases completely excluded. The persecution of the Jews then culminated in the Second World War, one of the darkest chapters in history. In order to never repeat this history again, a plan was put into action that had been discussed since the 19th century. The Jews were to be given their own state in which they could live peacefully. It was finally established in 1998 under the protection of the United States of the City of Israel in the Middle East. But in fact, the Middle Eastern location was only one of many proposals. Originally, there were plans for a Jewish state in Albania, but there were also plans for a state in the US, in Uganda, and in Eastern Russia. In all, 30 different places were considered for a possible Jewish state. Today we look at some of these places, see why these proposals were eventually discarded, and why it ultimately became the Middle East after all. Initial plans began as early as the early 19th century. One of the first proposals dates back to 1820, when a Jewish politician from New York was one of the first to advocate Zionism, the establishment of a Jewish state. He bought a large part of Grand Island, which was located in the Niagara River in New York State. On this island he founded the city of Ararad, named after the resting place of Ake Noah. In fact, however, the plan convinced very few at the time, which is why the plans were discarded after a short time and the city was abandoned. The plan of the British was much more successful. They too, advocated a homeland of their own for all Jews and therefore developed the British Uganda program. The goal was to give the Jewish people the part of British East Africa as their homeland. The British presented the offer to Theodore Herzl, founder of the Zionist Society, who presented the plan at the 6th Zionist Congress in 1903. The Uganda program was hotly debated at the time. In the end, however, it was still rejected. The reason for this was that a large part of the offered area was already populated by the Maasai and the land was also considered rather dangerous due to the flora and fauna. In addition, at that time there were already first voices for the establishment of a state in Palestine and the supporters feared that this idea would become impossible if the Uganda program was accepted. In 1928, the Soviet Union finally intervened in the question of a Jewish nation. The latter offered the Zionists a place in the far east of the Soviet Union near the border with China as a settlement area. However, the Soviet leadership did not do this altruistically, but pursued an active plan with the settlement of the Jews in this area. Large parts of the Far East were not settled at all at that time. Already for several decades attempts had been made in vain to move settlers in this region. And now the Jews were to be moved by propaganda in this region. However, the Jewish community in the Soviet Union at that time was mainly rooted in the West, in today's Ukraine and Belarus. Many Jews then accused Stalin of anti-Semitism, since it seemed as if he wanted to remove the Jews as far as possible from the center of power in the Soviet Union. Thus, the plan was doomed to failure from the beginning, especially since the regions offered had extreme climatic conditions, consisted largely of swamplands, and the Chinese border was considered extremely dangerous. Nevertheless, there was another relatively realistic plan for a Jewish state in Europe. In 1935, British Zionist journalist Leon Elton circled to Albania, which was considered very friendly to Jews and one of very few countries without a history of persecution of Jews. He held talks with the Albanian government, which welcomed Jewish immigration and assured him that religious intolerance was quite unknown in Albania. So wrote Daniel Elton in his travelogue. There is no reason whatsoever to believe that Jewish settlers would not live in complete harmony with the various elements of the population. The land also had the advantage of being completely cut off from industrialized Europe, yet offered extremely fertile soil for agriculture. It was calculated that this would meet the needs of at least 5 million Jewish inhabitants. Nevertheless, the plan ultimately failed. The reasons are no longer clear today. However, the plan probably came too close to the Second World War. The systematic persecution of Jews in Europe was already in full swing, and in 1939 Albania was finally occupied by Italy, and later by the German Reich. And after the war, the establishment of a Jewish state in Palestine was then promoted by the US, which discarded all other plans. In this way, the Jews had a protecting power and, moreover, Palestine was considered the original homeland of the Jews. Nevertheless, even during the World War, the Albanians showed their appreciation for the Jews. In spite of the occupation by the Axis powers, all the Jews of the country were hidden and protected, so that all survived. After the war, the number of Jews was even greater than before, because Albania was considered a safe haven in the war building in Europe. 
Did you know the plans in Albania for a Jewish state? Feel free to write it in the comments.